add up. Usually comparative studies are talking about differences between two things. So when you look at these paired data results down below, and they're talking about these second semester uh, projects and AP stats, what you'll notice is they talk about two things. They talk about an express lane and a regular lane. And what they want to know is they want to know about the differences between the two. Is there a difference between the two? So when you pair data like that, even though you see 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30 pieces of data, when you take the differences, there are only 15 pieces of data that you're going to be working with. So as we do this, this is kind of, there's an extra piece in here. The extra piece is that you're going to find the difference between these two pieces of data. So when I find the differences between these two, I'm going to take the second thing, the regular, and then subtract that, or subtract the express from that. So for example, in the first one, 342 minus 337, that value is 5. And I'm going to do that for every single piece of paired data. So in the second one, that's huge. That's 246, and then negative 46, um, 121. I'm going to go every other one so you can kind of see what's going on. So here's the differences. Because I write too big, I guess. This one is 30. Then the next one is 55. The next one is 79. The next one's negative 94. Then negative 17. And then 95. And then 20. And then 14, and then 129, and then negative 39, and then 42. And what ends up happening is, in your calculator, when you put this in, you put the differences into your list and do your calculations based on that. So the big idea here is that when you have paired data like this, so when you see paired, subtract and put the differences in L1 and then do all your stuff that we've normally been doing. So I want you guys to try that one. Everything's the same for the most part, but when you calculate your mean, I'll start you off with the, the mean stuff, the statement, and then after that you can go. Give it a shot. So our H0 in this case is talking about how the mean difference, the mean difference. So between the express lane and the regular lane, what should be the difference if there's? The express lane is faster. No, no. Zero. You never ever, you have zero. Remember, whatever your assumption is, your null hypothesis, it's never a greater than, less than, or not equal. It's always equals. So your mean difference should be zero. There should be no difference between the express lane and the regular lane. Your alternative hypothesis is that your mean difference is going to be more than zero. More. The regular, because I did the regular minus the express. We're assuming that the regular lane takes longer to travel in than the express lane. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah. So the difference should be more than zero. Now, if I would have subtracted the other way, what would I have said? Less than zero. You can pick either one. I'm just going to do it this way. So either one. If you want to do it the other way, almost everything is exactly the same. You might get a negative instead of a positive. You try that. So the mu d is the true mean difference. True mean difference, and in this case, I use the regular minus the express to talk about mine, in time to buy an item at the store, specifically the supermarket, I guess.
we will perform a one sample t test for mu difference at alpha equals 0.05. I don't think they told me anything. Um, we have a random sample of 15 differences. We will assume that there are at least 150 differences or 300 different times. So events are independent. Since we have less than 30 differences, the CLT does not apply And we will check our data. So we've already done a dot plot. We've already done a histogram. I'm going to do a box and whisker. So in my box and whisker, if I look at uh, the differences along the way here, what I notice is the smallest one was negative 94. I'm going to go with negative 100. And then if I split this in half, maybe, and this is 0. Oh, that's not going to work, is it? Shoot. So maybe here's 0. Here's 100. Here's 200. Here's 150, 50, negative 150. 250 and 300. So my box and whisker looked like this. My first part of my box and whisker was at negative 94. And then my next part was at negative 17. My next part, which is the median, was at 30. My next part was at 95, and my last part with no outliers was at 246. So when I connect this, it looks like it's slightly skewed right. So since there are no outliers, and only a slight skew right. We assume the data is approximately normal. When I perform my stats on this, I see that my X bar is 42.67. My standard deviation is 84.02. Uh, my degrees of freedom in the differences is 14, because remember we had 15 different things going on in differences. So my T value is 42.67. Seven minus zero, because remember we're talking about the differences, divided by 
84.02 over the square root of 15 differences. And my t-value, I got 1.97. So I'm pretty sure that we're going to see that we're going to reject the null. And so we're looking for the probability that our t is more than 1.97. This is a one tail. You get your t-value of 0 0.03. Five. And so in our conclusion, oh my our sample mean of forty two point six seven would occur. Three point four five percent of the time if the true mean difference was zero. Since our p value of point zero three four five is less than alpha, which was equal to 0 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the express lane is faster than the regular lane. You could also have said that the regular lane takes longer than the express lane. Remember, it's always in the context, so either way would be fine.